So in the last video, we looked at how you can create a cylinder in vPython. It uh, has some differences from the uh, sphere and the box that we've worked with before. Uh, the most important of which is that the position of the cylinder is measured from its end point, not from its center. Um, and the helix is a similar object. It's got a cylindrical general shape, but it's uh, it's curled around into a uh, into a spring or into a helix. And it's set up much the same way as a cylinder in that if I want to create a helix, I need to give it a position from the point that I want it to start at. So let's say we want to start, let's make this a vertical, vertically oriented spring. So let's make it at 0, 2, 0. And uh, so we need to give it a position. So that's the end point. Then we need to give it an axis, the direction we want it to point. And let's say we want this thing hanging down. So let's give it an axis of vector 0, comma, negative 1, comma, 0. So that means it's going to point in the downward y direction. And for size, uh, let's give this thing a, uh, let's see, let's give it a length of 1 and then now let's go with 0 0.1 comma 0 0.1. There we go. So this this should give me kind of the similar shape to what we've seen for the cylinder. The only difference is it'll be wrapping around. And there you have your helix. Um, it doesn't have, it's not terribly uh, visible on my screen. Um, so let's increase the diameter of, of the shape. Okay, so that gives us a little bit better. That makes it a little bit more visible. Um, so this is a basic spring shape or corkscrew or, or whatever it reminds you of. And this is useful to us in a physics class because we do need to model the behavior of a spring force, which we'll actually get to in a minute. Um, you can also control the number of windings with the coils argument. So for example, if this looks like too weak of a spring to you, you can give it more coils. So let's create an identical spring here uh, and let's move it over to the right. And this time we're going to give it more coils, more than the default number. Um, so let's say coils equals, let's see, I think the default is five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So let's give it, let's say eight coils. Control two to run. So here's our five coil spring on the left and here's our eight coil spring on the right. Uh, that doesn't Obviously, in terms of the physics, that doesn't actually change the way your spring force is going to work. It just changes the visualization. If you wanted your students to visualize a stronger spring versus a weaker spring, that's one way they could do it. Um, of course, another way you can make a spring look stronger or weaker is with the thickness of the actual uh, of the actual metal that's that's being wrapped around, and that's where you use the thickness argument. So let's suppose. I add in here thickness equals, uh, what is the default value? Um, I guess we'll have to, I guess we'll have to, to, to guess at this. Let's give it a thickness of 1.0. That's probably too much, but let's just see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that is definitely too thick. Um, and, and also let's move this one over to the left. I forgot to do that. Uh, let's give this a thickness of 0 0.1. Control two. Okay, so there we've got a much thicker spring. So either of these uh, looks stronger than this one because this one has more coils, so it's more tightly wound, or this one is thicker, so it's a little bit stiffer looking. Um, so again, these are just you know visual properties you can use to, uh, to make your springs look different. Of course, you can also change the color like you can with most everything else. Now, of course, if you're using vPython in a physics class, probably the most important thing you'll want to do with the Helix is create an animated uh, ball on a spring. So for that, we're going to uh, need to create a ball here. So let's create a sphere and uh, let's actually use our center spring here. Um, so we're going to call this uh, spring. We'll leave these two on just for reference, but here we'll create uh, we're going to save this so that we can reference it later. So this ball needs to be at, located at the end of the spring. So if I think about where this point is here at the end of the spring, I need to take spring.position and add to that spring.axis. All right, because I start here and I go in the direction of the axis. Um, let's give it a color equals color dot red, and let's give it a radius. Let's see, this spring is already two units long, so let's give this a radius of a half. Let's just double check and make sure that that is 
going in the direct, getting in the location that I want. Yeah, except it's a little bit too big. So let's make that a point one. Uh, now it looks too small. So let's make it a point two five. How about that? Uh, so let's go with point two. There we go. And again, the size doesn't actually impact any of the physics that's going on. Um, we just want to have a uh, you know, something that looks reasonable. So I've got the ball set up. I need to give it a couple of other physical properties to keep track of. So I need to give it a mass. Let's give it a mass of one. And let's give it a, uh, we need to give it a velocity vector. And let's give it initial velocity. Actually, let's, let's give this thing a velocity going in the y direction, 0, comma, 0 0.1 comma 0. There we go. And let's go ahead and give it a force vector, force vector zero, zero, zero. Cool. So we'll also need to give the spring a stiffness for the spring force. So we'll need to give this thing a stiffness equal to, let's give it a value of one for now. Uh, we can change that later if it doesn't animate the way we want. And so next to create the animation, we have to use the Euler Cromer method. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for how to set up the, uh, the Euler Cromer method, because I know we haven't talked about that too terribly much in this series. The first thing we have to do is give it a time step. Always use a small number. And then we have to set up a while loop. Uh, while true is usually the safest, because it'll keep running no matter what. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the force acting on the ball. So that's going to be ball.force equals, and I need to have this thing be the negative of the spring stiffness stiffness times the displacement of the ball from its equilibrium position. So let's actually record that equilibrium position. Let's call it equilibrium position equals. And let's just have it be the starting point for the ball here. Copy and paste. Cool. So now we need the difference between the ball dot position and the equilibrium position. And I think that'll work because if the ball moves upward, this will be a positive and the force will point downward. If the ball moves downward, this would be a negative and the force will point upward. So I think I've got my, um, I think I've got my force set up correctly there. So we, we set up the force on the ball. Next, we need to update the ball's velocity. So that's gonna be ball.velocity plus the change. And the change is the ball.force divided by ball.mass all times our time step, which is why we need this to be a small number so this is always a small change. Uh, and then we need to do the same thing with the position, ball.position equals ball.position plus its change, and that's gonna be ball.velocity times dt. And again, it's important to evaluate your velocity first and then your position, because otherwise uh, you can end up with your energy running out of control and your system uh, behaving unphysically. And now if I just leave this the way it is, the ball will move up and down, but the spring is not going to change, right? We would like for the ball to move up and down and for the spring to expand and contract as needed. So what we're going to do next is adjust the spring's axis to always be equal to the ball dot position minus the spring position. So that the spring is always going from its original position, which is not changing, to the ball's position, which is changing. And I think think that'll be enough. Oh, we also need to add an animation rate or else the thing will uh, will never appear on the screen. All right, let's hit control two to run. And I have set my DT or my rate too small. Let's uh, add a couple zeros onto this rate here. Control two. And there you have it. So we've got the ball moving. So we're, the ball is being uh, uh, animated by this ball dot position line. The spring is being animated by the spring dot axis line. And so you have this nice uh, moving system here. It's not moving too smoothly on my view. So let's actually, uh, let's decrease the time step just a little bit. It'll run slower, but it should be smoother now. There we go, that's a little bit smoother. And so you could expand this if you wanted to. You can add multiple springs onto this thing. You just have to add another force for every spring and then update each spring's motion. Uh, you can also make this thing move around in two dimensions just by giving it a velocity that points in more than the Y direction. Um, there's a lot of fun you can have with this. I have my students work on this for, for a couple weeks in, in my class. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.